All right, welcome in, guys. Garden Report, Gerard Blakely at the Garden, uh, along with Bobby Manning, uh, Josue Pavon, Tim Shields, Ahmed Bhattacharji. Only sad loser not at tonight's game is this guy right here. <laughs> wait, time out, John. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have any timeouts because Joe Mazzula took them all. Oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. How about that? How about Joe? <laughs> Listen, this was this may be my favorite Joe Mazzula coach game all season long because he did he made the adjustment and and we 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 talk about him in a damn timeouts all the time. But this was he absolutely nailed it. Time out after time out after timeout. This was the Joe Mazzula that you're going to win a championship with if you're the Boston Celtics. The way he managed this game. Love what he did tonight. Loved it. How about that? We're leading with Joe Mazzula <laughs> coaching well. Talk, uh, talking timeouts. We're talking timeouts, John. No, I mean, it was such a big story in the last game. And again, I, you know, I, I've used the expression a ton. It is really, really low hanging fruit because it's a thing that everyone can understand. And I'm not, you know, not to demean any of Celtics fans. I think it's actually, you know, one of the more educated fan bases out there just in terms of understanding basketball and what's going on. But the timeouts is such an easy thing that everybody can grab a hold of. It doesn't mean it's not real. It's just, it, it, it just is something that everyone can kind of see, but it's the fact that everyone can see it, it, it that made it such a big, big story because it's like, that's what you do as a coach. Right. You call timeouts. It's like the in-game management. That's kind of what you do, right? But no, he did that. I also, I mean, I tweeted semi-jokingly, but I mean, you know, I think love is the is the is the reason Jalen Brown hit that free throw to send the game to overtime, right? It's Joe Mazzulla's love, you know. So love and trust. That's what it's all about, right? That's uh, that's how this game went, and just such an interesting game because it's again you talk about like these bipolar, you know, weird mood swings that you have watching the Celtics these days, um, you know, you can kind of get yourself all revved up and like, well, Tatum and Brown are going to play like ass like this. Um, obviously they're going to lose. And then all of a sudden Tatum starts to find, find his rhythm a little bit. And then all of a sudden Jalen Brown out of nowhere finds his, and then he gets to overtime and he just explodes uh, and, you know, takes the game over himself. And they're just completely rewriting the narratives of this game that was heading in a, a totally different direction. This game for most of it felt like the Lakers should have been up double digits, 15, 16, 17. They yeah. could never put the Celtics away. They hung in there, hung in there, hung in there. And then, uh, you know, they they they, they kind of, you know, they caught fire late. You had Tatum really didn't show up until, you know, five minutes to go in the third. And he scores 15 points in that five-minute stretch there. He did all almost all of his damage in that little window. But that was essential to kind of getting them back into things there. You know, Lakers had gone up 9 or 11, and they cut that back, and they took the lead going in. Uh, just a weird, it, like, just a weird, weird game. It, it was. It was. It game to get your finger on the pulse of it. You know, it couldn't quite figure out. There was no real rhythm or flow to it. No, no, you're right, though. I mean, because Tatum had that amazing third quarter stretch, and you're thinking, you know, he's just going to carry this into the fourth, and they're going to win. And it just didn't happen. And, and you know, Jalen Jalen had, you know, he, he had 37. If it wasn't for foul trouble, Jalen probably would have went for 50 tonight. Holy I crap, mean, right? I mean, you know? I mean, it, it was like every single matchup that he had, he won. And there was, there was, I mean, LeBron got some of that. Troy Brown got some of that. You know, good friend Dennis Schroeder, he got some of that. You go down the line of, of, of Lakers players, and Jalen Brown dominated that matchup over and over and over he again. He did, and the only but again, the narratives of this game could have gone so many different directions. Yeah. J Jalen Brown, for all of his heroics in the fourth quarter and dominating those matchups, had a stretch of three straight plays back to back to back where he forced a really, really, really yep. difficult, ill-advised shot in the fourth quarter, got caught napping as Patrick Beverly just kind of stormed in there, not blocking out. He turned his head. Didn't pick anybody up. Beverly comes in for that massive jam. Then Jalen on a really great play misses a wide open three. So that doesn't go in his direction uh, at all there. Uh, and then he just, you know, when it did get to overtime, he just absolutely took over the game uh, and, uh, and 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 put it away. It was, you know, the whole thing was, you know, just like I said, just the, the swings of this game were so interesting. Yeah, yeah, and the thing that, that for me, just watching it from here, was, it was a little bit frustrating. Was you could see Tatum going through a stretch where he just wasn't locked in. 
at both ends of the floor. Remember, weird. He was dis- disconnected. Yeah, there was there was that stretch like in, in near the uh, end of the second quarter where they're up by like a couple of points, and the guy that he should be guarding leaks out, and he sees him leaking out, and Jay or excuse me, Jason doesn't get back enough, and you know he had a layup earlier in that second quarter where the reason he got the layup was because he didn't get back on defense. Those were the moments that just frustrate the hell out of me because to me, you're, you're cheating the game a little bit when you're trying to, you're taking shortcuts and, and Tatum this season for the most part has not been about the shortcuts. And it was, it was disappointing to see that, but listen, they win this game because Jalen Brown showed up when it absolutely mattered most. And they got so many other guys no that were chipping in. Malcolm Brogdon, Grant Williams, Derek White. You go to now, Al Horford hit a big three, which is one of the few shots he made. Uh, they needed the entire group to get this win. This was, without question, one of their better team wins. Because even though Jalen Brown's number stood out for, for obvious reasons, so many other guys chipped in for this I win. I know, but it's again, it's it's an overtime game. And they scored 125 points, had 18 assists. This didn't feel like a great like. No, it was this, not. They, they weren't moving the ball at all. This was a really weird, sticky game. You know, like I said, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ISO from these guys. The difference right. was just they got hot at the right times. As I said, yep. Tatum with one little stretch, and that's it. That's yep. all. He was not good tonight. He was yeah. not good at all tonight, Say, save for that 15 quarter, 15 points in five minutes stretch in the third quarter where he got hot. Uh, and then, you know, Brown, uh, you know, who just kind of, you know, exploded there, um, you know, late and especially in overtime. I think it's 11 in OT, um, you know, and just got it all done. But I mean, not a high assist game. Again, you're going to talk about this offense. This offense was a this offense was a mess most of the night. And like you know, the person that you know, like the for the for the, for that for the I hate Marcus Smart. Say crowd, it, say it, John. Say it, say it. I'm saying <laughs> for the people out there, for the I don't like Marcus. These guys are taking some heavy, heavy L's yeah. uh, these last few days because this offense has really looked pretty gross uh, without him uh, in these last four games here. And again, yeah, they, and- they get the win here, but the offense looked bad most of the night. Um, and some good individual performances, um, you know, heroic, you know, again, Jalen, who was outstanding, um, you know, when they needed him to, to, to pull out the W. Yeah, and there was a lot of detachment at both ends of the floor for Boston. And, and to me, uh, again, it's a reminder that you can probably get through maybe a game or two here and there without Marcus Smart. But when you look at what happens when you've got an extended stretch and you don't have him out there, you're going to have dogfights and games that you should be yep. absolutely running over teams. This game should never have been as close as it was when you look at the players that the Celtics have on their roster and who the Lakers have. There, there's no way this game should be going to overtime. But again, with out market smart you don't have that glue guy that makes sure everyone is where they need to be and guys are getting the ball in their sweet spots and defensively what bothered me about this game was some of those blockouts that didn't happen you know Russell Westbrook coming from the corner with a tip in Patrick Beverly with that putback jam that should not happen and I'm you cannot convince me otherwise that that would have happened under Marcus Smart's watch. Uh, those guys may get points, but I don't think they're getting those type of buckets. I, I've never really understood in general. Like I don't know what the where at what it's almost like Major League Baseball players and bunting. You know, you just stop taking it seriously, and it's like a really just simple fundamental thing, and nobody can do it, and they don't practice it, and they don't take it seriously in BP. Then you have to lay down a bunt, and absolutely nobody can do it. I don't know at what point in your basketball development blocking out ceases to be something that you give a shit about doing. It's remarkable to me how just nobody in the NBA boxes out. But I mean, at least find the, at least locate the guy. Celtics weren't even, I understand, instead of really getting down and blocking out, most people will just put a hand and feel for somebody. But Celtic, in many of these cases, these putbacks, they weren't even feeling for anybody. Everyone's just standing around looking up. I mean, what are you doing there? Like, don't you realize everybody wants that ball? You have to be at least cognizant of where people are around you. 